welcome to Learning the Law, a podcast about all things legal with a focus on current events, where we try to teach you things in one hour, give or take. My name is Ashley, aka Phoenix Nymphy, and my co-host, who is the man of the hour, my husband, Ron. It's this me. This podcast is purely educational and should not be taken as legal advice. This podcast does not create an attorney-client relationship. And this podcast is based on his interpretation of relevant law. Ron is a licensed practicing attorney in the state of California. Yes. Whew. I've been licensed since September 15th, 1999. So going on 22 years soon of practicing. Wow, really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, so... My name is Ashley, as I said before, and I am a content creator. I am a voice actor. Oh, um, and I've done a lot. I've done quite a few podcasts in the past. So this is not my first podcast. This is your per- first podcast. Yeah. Um, but this is not my first podcast. So we felt uh, so actually, let me backtrack a little bit. Um, so that's what I do. Um, why we are here though, is because over the weekend, uh, you know, as content creators, we're all over social media. It's kind of part of our job. It's what we have to do. And I joined TikTok a while back and, um, I do voice acting stuff. I sing on TikTok, um, and, you know, post stuff that is, you know, important to, to me. So I came in here and I asked Ron a question and (laughs) I, um, in the edited version of this, I'll throw up the, the audio clip because I, I didn't even think about that until right now, but in the edited, I'll throw up the audio clip so you can, can hear it. Hey baby. Yeah. As an attorney, what are your thoughts on uh, the shit that happened this week? Well, I think everybody associated with the mod needs to be indicted on a murder charge for that officer that died. And everybody is saying, well, I didn't kill him. But, uh, yeah, somebody caved his head in with a fire extinguisher. Somebody knows who did it. And everybody in that mob is guilty of complicity in that. And um, a lot of stuff was taken out of that capitol building so that's a burglary in addition to every other felony federal felony murder rule says burglary is an underlying condition of charging people with murder so everybody who took something should be charged with murder of that poor officer who was unarmed at the time and had his head so that ended up blowing up and a lot of you have asked so many questions and they're really good questions yeah, hard and to keep up with them it is it's really hard to keep up with and tiktok it's really difficult to go into depth uh about these type of things uh on tiktok because it's only a 60 second platform so i figured since i have a twitch we might as well go ahead and do a podcast right and kind of go into more detail and kind of and we're obviously we're going to discuss today. We're going to discuss what the TikTok was about, which was your comment on the um, on the the riots. It was uh, the federal felony murder charge. That's what you said that you would like to do because every single person that was in the building could be charged for the, in your words. That poor policeman who had his head bashed in. With now, a fire extinguisher. Right, with a fire extinguisher. Now, you know, getting into semantics, um, there was more to that. But, you know, it's a 60-second platform. He just answered it, you know, off the top of his head. And now we're here. Right. So the first... Um, yeah, all right. 
Sorry, he's scrolling through my notes because a good podcaster has notes and he scrolled too far and I couldn't remember what the next thing is. And uh, you'll find here that I'm not really good at segues. I'm really awkward. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, what is the federal felony murder charge that you specifically were talking about? Okay, first, felony murder. Baby, you, you got to kind of lean into the microphone. Oh, you told me you, that. You're right. going to have the best audio if you actually talk to the microphone. First, <laughs> federal murder, or I'm sorry, felony murder. That is a murder or a death that occurs during an underlying felony, such as arson, burglary, child abuse. It all depends on the jurisdiction you're in. Now, in the case of the D.C. riots, you're talking federal felony murder yes and it, it's different than some other jurisdictions it lists specific underlying felonies that have to occur in order for the rule to be invoked and those um felonies listed are arson escape such as from a penitentiary murder <laughs> i know He's murder. smacking the desk, and I know that the microphone is picking it up, <laughs> and I'm having to stop. <laughs> okay. Uh, kidnapping, treason, espionage, sabotage, aggravated sexual abuse, child abuse, burglary, robbery, and then there's a couple of esoteric things no one ever gets charged with. Okay, so when you say underlying felony... Can you kind of go into depth about that? Because I, I'm a little confused about that, and I don't think a lot of people understand uh, what what you mean when you say that. Okay, the underlying felony. You can perform an action. You can protest. You mm -hmm. can walk down the street. But if you do an action that constitutes a felony such as, say, arson. Um, if you're a protester, you walk down the street and you think to yourself, oh, I'm going to light that building on fire. The arson of that building is an underlying felony. Okay, so it's just a felony then. It's right. just, it's just, okay. So, all right, the terminology that is used in the legal field is so confusing. <laughs> If we made it easy, then people wouldn't have to pay us. This is true. This is very true. That's, that's yeah. That's and making sure my phone was not was on silent because I w it was blowing up over you. Things are blowing up and I'm trying to make sure everything is, you know. Um, so if someone dies in that arson. Yeah. Even though you didn't know they were in there. You can be charged. Depending on the jurisdiction. Depending on the jurisdiction with felony murder. Right. Okay. Now, if they have, they're going to get you on murder anyway. So they're not going to invoke a felony murder on that case. But if someone drives you away from that arson, they can get that uh, getaway driver under felony murder as well. So... This particular charge is more for a massive group of people, not for individuals. It's, it's for a group. Okay. Small so or, small or large. Okay. So, um, trying to kind of understand it. So like a lot of the things that would come up were comparisons to black lives matter because there was arson, there was burglary there, you know, there was stuff like that. Um, but, those don't fall under the federal felony, or do they? Only the ones that occurred in D.C. or on federal property. Okay, so it has to occur on federal property. Right. So a target is not federal property. It's private property. Well, it, it's, it's a corporation. It, it's property owned by a corporation in a specific jurisdiction. Yeah. Whether it's Washington, Idaho, Ohio, Nevada. Each separate state has their own felony murder rule. So because you practice in California, um, the uh, so if 
if that happened at a Target or, you know, a building here in California, they could be tried for whatever California's felony murder charges. Correct. Okay. So in that particular instance, it, it depends on that jurisdiction. And there were a lot of protests over the over 2020. So obviously we don't know the charges. We're specifically focusing on what happened Wednesday. But to kind of answer people's questions about the Black Lives Matter uh, instances, the answer is yes, those people involved can be charged for murder, a felony murder, a felony murder, but they cannot be charged for federal felony murder because it didn't take place on federal rounds. There were some BLM protests in D.C. There were some, but I'm specific. But I don't think the died. ones that people are ref- right. I don't think anybody died. I think specifically the ones that people are referring to are uh, the ones where they burned down people's buildings, people's um, people's personal property. In addition, um, the murder has to be reasonably, or the death has to be reasonably foreseeable. Right. Um. So, in the case of say an arson, yeah, uh, it's reasonably foreseeable that somebody is in that building, even if the lights are turned off. Yes. Okay. You know, there could be a security guard in there walking around with this flashlight. Okay. You know. Um, so in the, in the case of a violent mob, it is reasonably foreseeable that somebody is going to die from the fights, especially when you have had previous tweets saying there needs to be blood Let's go fight. Let's go take the capital. We need to take our government back. Mm. I mean, all of that was reasonably foreseeable that something was going to happen. Right. So in this particular instance, they were not a protest. They were a riot. No, this was a conspiracy to riot. Okay. So and that is that is something that you can actually prove in court with the evidence that we have. Yes. Um, explain why you came up with the felony, the federal felony murder charge. Like why, why did that pop up into your head when I asked you that question? Um, you learned about it in law school. Mm-hmm. Can you kind of like, yeah, there you yeah. go, babe. Okay. <laughs> you learned about it in law school. It's not something that's invoked a lot. But it's not as rare as people think. Okay. And whenever you have a group of people and someone dies, you got to think of ways to prosecute people. Okay. And um, I moved it over here so that you would stay. Okay. (laughs) Um, A top prosecutor in the case that's going on right now, and they've opened up 25 domestic terrorism cases. Uh, His name is Ken Cole, said at a news conference, I think uh, Friday, that uh, felony murder is always in play in a situation like this. So this isn't something I came up with, you know, out of my head. It's in play. So you said it and then the top prosecutor said also said it. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Actually, that's news to me. I missed that announcement. Um, So. okay, so. Let's compare this to Black Lives Matter protests, because that is one thing that people, of course, are constantly comparing to saying that it is uh, a lot of people use the term double standards. I know that it's not double standards and uh, trying to keep opinions out of this. Explain from a legal standpoint, the differences when it comes to that and why it's not a double standard. Well, um, I will take the D.C. like Black Lives Matter protest and compare it with the D.C. Insurrection. Okay, that's fair. Um, 
I think that's a better comparison because it is actually in the same location. There was no predetermination that they needed to break into the buildings. There was no predetermination that they needed to stop the election count. There was no predetermination that they needed to stop the working of Congress. They were there to protest, which is your First Amendment God-given right. Right. Um, is it reasonably foreseeable that someone's going to get injured in that protest? If it was just the first Black Lives Matter protest, it's debatable. But since 2020, it seems like the Black Lives Matter protests have attracted white supremacy counter protests. And it is reasonably foreseeable when those two groups get together, something's going to happen. Right. Now, I don't believe. So it's a pattern thing that is established there when it comes to that. Right. Okay. Um, and of course, you had in, in the insurrection weeks of parlor and tweets going out about what needed to be done. And they're not done yet. Right, because there's been more evidence come out that they plan to do every capital in the U.S. It's January 17th and January 20. Everybody better watch out for themselves. Be aware of your surroundings. So that so then that is why it wasn't a protest, because they are specifically talking about harming people. Right. And there is you, that evidence in that had, backup. You had people in the insurrection that were wearing body armor carrying assault weapons and zip ties. Which, which you I can't had, open carry assault weapons. That's also a charge. That's also illegal, right? On the ca um, Capitol, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can't carry... Okay, yeah, you can't carry any weapons. But that's um, not... An, uh, because of the way the felony murder rule works, right. that is not an underlying felony to charge someone with murder. Right, but what I'm saying is that is a reasonable foreseeable thing like oh they're coming up with weapons somebody's gonna get hurt right so so, so when people bring up the zip tie guy sorry i'm having one of those brain moments so when people bring up the zip tie guy because you know a lot of people are like he's just he just has zip ties it's just it, it just looks like it but he's not gonna do it it doesn't matter because it's perception right it, one, it's These perception. zip ties are specifically used for a for for specific things. They're used to immobilize and basically kidnap people. Right. So that right there is reason for officers to arrest him on site. Yeah, there's been people that have had duct tape, zip ties, and knives in the back of their car get stopped for a you know a traffic light. And then all of a sudden, they're like, oh, this guy's a serial killer. You Just know, based off of pattern a, behavior, even if you're a, not doing anything with zip ties. Because they'll arrest him. And then they do the investigation on the, on the tools. There's very little difference between, and I'll use a fictional TV character, Dexter's murder kit. Right. And the zip tie guy. Like legally, like, yeah. and this is this is not based off of opinion. This is not based off of bias. This is legally why, when you look at that picture, you can say without a doubt he is planning to do something. Right there, there is another guy also in body armor and assault that was asking about where Nancy Pelosi was. Yeah. Um, uh, a number of them and, you know, a number of them were saying, hang Mike Pence. They wanted to know where the hell he was, too. Sorry about the dogs. <laughs> um, so. Wow, that brings up a lot of questions that I want to ask, but it, it gets more into the. Uh, opinion and biases 
versus stick, staying on topic. So, right. As far as I know, the Black Lives Matter protests weren't targeting any politicians. They weren't wanting to hang anybody. They weren't wanting to shoot any politicians. Right. The, the violence was foreseeable, especially with the counter protesters. Oh, my God. You won't shut up. Sorry. But um, and if anyone did die from those, you could. Hold on. Okay. And if anyone did die during those protests, you could um, arrest those protesters and counter protesters on felony murder. Not saying you can't. Okay. Yeah. And and I think that's a misconception that a lot of you are are thinking that we're saying that people at, at, at any other protest, not just BLM, any other protest can't be arrested. No, they absolutely can. And we're not saying they can't. Um, also, I wanted to note that based off of our, that Antifa is not a group. Right. It is. It's um, so people who reference Antifa like it's a group like the KKK or Black Lives Matter. It's it's not a group. And the government has actually come out recently and said, these are the list of those groups. This is this is this does not fall under these groups. It is by the government not defined as a group. Correct. So. um you you cannot reference Antifa when it comes to that stuff uh, legally. It would because it's not. It would be similar to saying that vegans are a group, right? And there's a central person organizing every vegan in the country. Doesn't happen, right? Okay. Um. <laughs> Chat just said, "Hey, the dog's opinion matters too." <laughs> Um, so, um, the current charges, um, there were quite a few people referencing the current charges because some of them, like the guy who had his feet up on Nancy Pelosi's desk only had a year. Uh, people are wondering, they want to know why these people are getting out of getting out of jail, why they're getting out on bail, if, the, you know, all of the, like, what's going on overall with these charges? Why, why are they being put, why are they allowed to get back on the street if they're carrying assault weapons? Like, I'm actually really confused. Like, Th this I mean, will be if you my watch, opinion. If you watch Law and Order, if you watch Law and Order, people who behave like that don't go back on the street. So my, my opinion <laughs> Is one, they don't have enough uh, cells to hold them all currently. Oh, okay. Two, there's more charges coming. Okay. So you think they maybe are undercharging just to get them on the books and then add later? Right. And they don't want to, this is my guess, they don't want to charge them with everything before January 20th. Because of Trump's pardon power. Pardon power. Okay. Um, which is another topic that we're going to get to. And, uh, and in situations with such with like gang members and stuff, they will charge the easy ones first. So this is pretty common. And and they will then investigate and add charges down the line. Okay. So this is actually. A pretty common way in which people do stuff. Right. And with it being such a massive group and so many people, it's going to take some time. Right. And I'm not saying that they're going to charge people with felony murder. If they, they could. It's definitely on the plate based off of uh, what's his name? Ken, Ken Cole. Ken Cole. Yeah. Um, they could use it as a hammer on somebody. Who know who they think knows something or has video of that officer dying. Oh, so they okay, so there's a lot that goes into why they're okay, because it it is very easy to look at it is very easy to look at something and compare it and be like, well, why are these guys, you know, because a lot of the a lot of the excuses are because it's the color of their skin, which 
we can't, we don't know. We don't know. And we're not going to say that that's why, but I understand why that's the opinion of that and why. So that's why I asked that question because, you know, when you see one group of people just getting the hammer done versus another group, it is a little bit, it, it is, this is a little bit different scenario. Um, it's also not the norm to have. <laughs> but look at the Black Lives Matter protests in D.C. and how much or how many National Guardsmen were out protecting buildings and such. Right. You had a ton of them. And then there was no one, even though we knew it was coming. Uh, and even after the police chief who has resigned um, said that he wanted the National Guard, he was denied. So my question on that is, um, when it comes to that, can someone be charged for that? Can can there can something be done ab about the um, uh, the lack of force, the lack of people there? Um, even though you have the constitutional right to give your grievances to the United States. Yeah. You really can only sue the United States with the United States permission. And that isn't going to happen. Yikes. So regardless of who made the decision, they're kind of safe. In the end. Yes. And who made the decision? Nobody knows. Chain of command goes to commander in chief. OK, that's getting into opinion and we want to stick to, you know, legal factual stuff um that is unfortunate uh that someone can't be held accountable because they deliberately put people's lives i mean uh, officers died yeah. they i mean officers there were officers that were beaten yeah. you know there's video yeah. footage from the what? rioters po showing that they are bashing in you know people's heads and it, it just it's they put people's lives literally at risk and people yeah. died be because another officer dead right now if he wasn't wearing his helmet because they bashed his head in between two doors. Right. And he's not going to be going back to work anytime soon. Right. So and I mean, this is my opinion, but I don't think that's right. I don't think that's right. I mean, they were doing their job and they left them understaffed. For what purpose? That's a question. That's a question. But we I don't have even an opinion, have. But I won't say it. We have the and we don't even have the option to try to bring it out in court. Not without the U.S. permission. Wow. That's messed up. That's that. That makes me want to cry. That really makes me want to cry. Um. So. Uh. Back to the trial, one of the questions was here. Let me actually specifically ask the question. Uh, let me pull it up. I should be better prepared for this. I, I am such a professional. Um, oh, my goodness, Remus, I will lock you out of this room. Um. OK, from Amanda uh, Joseph ACSFW, could you ask him if they indict everyone, would that lessen the punishment or make it to where no one ends up guilty because they can't blame one single person? Well, um, if they have a huge trial like that, one of the charges will be conspiracy. Mm -hmm. And you can't point the other finger and say it wasn't me. In a conspiracy. If they prove the conspiracy, they're going to get everybody. Wow. Um, I'm actually curious. Is this good? This is going to take a long time for this to happen and deal oh, yeah. and be dealt this with. Isn't, this isn't stopping anytime soon. So this is this. What happened Wednesday is uh, going to be in courts for. This will be the lingering news story of 2021. Wow. 
Wow. Um, so who, okay, so who can be charged? Uh, first of all, everybody who went into that Capitol building can be charged. Burglary. Burglary is the breaking. So specifically, okay, let me reference back specifically on federal felony murder. Who yeah. can be charged for federal felony murder? Everybody that was in that Capitol building. So everybody that was inside the building. Yes. Okay. Explain what breaking means, because a lot of people think because there there has been um, rumors and allegations that they were just let in, um, that doors were held open by certain members of Congress of the GOP. Um, we don't know if those are true. These are allegations. They have to, you know. Allegedly, that happened. How, um, how then, if they were allowed in, why is it still called breaking and entering? Well, first, for burglary, you have three basic elements. Okay. One is a breaking, two is of a building. And three is the intent to commit a felony or crime within. Okay. Okay. So the first one is breaking. Most people think breaking means physically breaking down a door, breaking a window. That's not a breaking. A breaking is simply breaking the threshold of the building, similar to a touchdown in football. If the football goes over the goal line, it's a touchdown. If you go over the threshold of the building, you're breaking. Okay. Okay. Now, you, it doesn't have to be you personally. If you had a 10-foot pole and there is an open window, and you reached into that building with that pole and took somebody's purse off of a dresser, that's a burglary. You broke the threshold with that pole. You stole that purse. You're done. Wow. Okay. And then based on how much money is in that purse. It goes up. It depends on, you know, the degree of burglary. Okay. So. Um, so in this case, whether or not somebody let you in. Doesn't matter. You broke the threshold of that building. Okay. So if you were inside the building. Even, what if you didn't steal anything? You intended to occupy the building. That is a crime because, because it's a federal building. Okay. You're restricted from being there. And that's all you need for a burglary. Okay. So burglary does not necessarily mean they are robbing you. Correct. So, wow, okay. If, if somebody breaks into a house and rapes somebody. They still get hit with burglary. Yeah, they can still get hit with burglary. Wow. You know, even if they don't take anything. So, did they have these kind of charges so that they can stack them? Yeah. Okay, so all of these are possible, like, it's just a possibility. These are possibilities that could happen, and this is why these are possibilities. Um, specifically, uh, so what was the third one for burglary? The intent to commit a crime. So you have the intent, so, the, so just occupying it is also the int intent then, because of the fact that it is a federal building. And you, there is restricted access. And since it, oh, it doesn't okay. matter if someone lets you in. I want to take a moment. D.C. is not a state. This is why we're talking on the federal level. D.C. falls under federal laws. Right. So all of the stuff that we're talking about is at a federal level. Right. You got 50 other jurisdictions in the U.S. Different elements can 
vary from the federal. Okay. Um, but federally. Um, where was I? I lost my train of thought. Sorry. Um, we're, we're talking about who all can be charged. So oh. every person that broke that threshold and walked into that building can possibly get a federal felony murder charge. Yes. That's a lot of dang people. No, and not only felony murder for Officer uh, Sicknick. Yeah. But also for the lady that was shot by the cops. Who was going through the window. Correct. What about... Um, I think there are five people now total that have died. What about the other deaths? Um, the other deaths, I, I think technically there's six now. Dang. Okay. Um, there was an officer that committed suicide the right. day after. You got to look at that and say, was that reasonably foreseeable because of the insurrection? That's a hard thing to prove. You can attempt so, it, but it's going to be that's tough probably going to gonna prove. fail. Uh, okay. The other three had medical issues, from my understanding. Um, I don't know that one guy tasered himself in the nuts. Allegedly. And gave himself a heart attack. I don't see that being reasonably foreseeable at all. <laughs> um, and someone else had a stroke. Uh-huh. Um, you, you could try and, and argue that... Emotional. The excitement of the of the insurrection was reasonably foreseeable. Usually that that has failed in the past on on that kind of thing. Oh. So in that particular case, it's a possibility, but it's going to be it, it would be difficult. So it's not a yes or no answer. It's a maybe. Right. Um, so what is this possible geofence warrant? Okay. This was something that doing a little bit of research, a geofence warrant takes a particular area and they get a search warrant for, say, every cell phone that was in that area. Okay. And then they get whose cell phones were in this particular area at a particular time. And they go and they arrest everybody or at least question them. And it's a questionable warrant. Wow. They've been allowed by some and they've been denied. They could try and use it in this case to get the information from the cell phone companies and then trace everybody there. Who had a cell phone that was turned on. Oh, wow. And um, because it is a federal building and it is D.C., there are there's a lot of security. There is a lot of security. So even if you weren't videoed on someone's phone, you probably still were seen. Uh, at least they know that your cell phone was in the area. Yeah. So that's um, so a lot. So people who haven't got caught yet, it's essentially only a matter of time. They, they may have already submitted for that warrant under seal. And we won't even know that that warrant was granted. Wow. Oh, man. Um, you know, until later. So what? About so back so continuing with charges and stuff. What about the congresswoman that tweeted Pelosi's everywhere about? Um, there's a section of the Fourteenth Amendment that she could be removed from Congress. Explain. Um, I would need to bring up the Fourteenth Amendment. Uh. <laughs> Uh, which section? Section four, please. Uh, section four. The validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law, including debts 
incurred for. Okay, that's not it. Okay. It try section five then. No, section three. Uh, there no, we go. No person shall be a senator or representative in Congress or elector of president and vice president or hold any office, civil or military, under the United States or under any state who, having previously taken an oath as a member of Congress or as an officer of the United States or as a member of any state legislature or as an executive or judicial officer of any state to support the Constitution of the United States shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. But Congress may, by a vote of two thirds of each house, remove such disability. In a nutshell. Wow. She, she has taken an oath. She tweeted out where Pelosi was constantly, from what I understand. Yeah. Uh, therefore, is that insurrection in and of itself? Hmm, but she's giving aid and comfort to those in the insurrection. Yeah. That's enough. Yeah. Now, are you going to get two thirds of the uh, House and two thirds of the Senate to vote her out? Probably not. Probably not. Uh. But- I'd I'd bring it up anyway. Yeah. I have a, uh, there is actually a question from D flux. Could they use that to remove the president? Um, actually Trump is our next subject and I have a feeling we're probably going to be on that particular subject for a while. And we are meeting, we are getting very close to the end of the podcast. So in a nutshell, they could use the 14th amendment. So they could actually use the 14th amendment. Yeah. But once again, you need two thirds of the Senate. Right. And two thirds of the House, which. You had 146, I believe, uh, House members vote against a fair election. So. You're not going to get two thirds to oust the president on that. That's your opinion. That is my opinion. (laughs) It's fact that 146 House members voted against a free and fair election. Um, yes. Uh, so we, wow, there's so many good questions. So we're definitely going to have to continue this podcast to discuss, um, this. So, uh, I guess next Tuesday we will come back and continue discussing this because, I mean, I don't think we can talk about this in 20 minutes. No, and um, we're just today. Today is the 19th. Today's the 12th. 12th. In a week, it will be the 19th. We'll see if there is any violence on the 17th and what preparations are being taken for Inauguration Day on the 20th. Yeah, so uh, we will come back to this subject because uh, so many people have had so many great questions and it kind of discusses things that uh, while we are kind of centering on... um, the federal felony law felony uh, murder or fe- yeah the felony the federal felony murder ru- law um there's still so much that kind of comes under that particular this this particular umbrella and discussion so uh we'll continue we will continue with uh this subject next tuesday and we're still going to be putting out some uh, TikTok videos, right? Yeah, we will. And we'll continue putting out TikTok videos. So don't forget to um, to follow there. Uh, thank you. Sorry, I'm trying to get to my closing because I'm a good podcaster and I put my stuff on notes. <laughs> I just go off the cuff. Uh, that is why people like listening to you talk. <laughs> um. Thank you so much for listening to Learning the Law. If you liked this podcast and want to hear more, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and share in all your favorite places. You can find it hosted on Twitch at twitch.tv slash phoenixnymphy. Uh, Use the hashtag learning the law on TikTok to follow more here, uh, to follow more there. 
Uh, you can find Ron on Twitter at NecroKijo and Ashley on most social media platforms at Phoenix Nymphy. If you have any questions, please tweet, comment, or email at twolazydogsmedia at gmail.com. This has been a Two Lazy Dogs production. Bye, everyone. <laughs>